if you work in the field of addiction or you know people who are in recovery, you are likely getting inundated with information about the brain. And I have to say, a lot of it is really good stuff, and it may be very helpful. But the problem is this. No amount of information about the brain will cure addiction. You, you might find that to be absolutely shocking. But l- let me look at you know, what are the kind of the three typical explanations for how people get addicted. And then let's do a thought experiment. And you, you tell me at the end what you think. So the first major explanation is that if we could just heal the trauma that the brain has suffered, people would no longer be addicted. If we, if we could restore the brain and the nervous system back to its factory settings that it had before the trauma, if we could deal with that past trauma, then a person would no longer need to use substances because they are only using substances to deal with with pain, emotional pain. It's a fairly good hypothesis, and I think it's some it's somewhat true. The other hypothesis is that if we could simply get rid of the addiction itself, the addiction itself causes changes to the brain's chemi- chemistry, and if we could fix that, we could take away the cravings and we could restore the brain to its factory settings that happened before the addiction, then the person will no longer be addicted. Not a bad hypothesis. There's a third one, and it still has to do with the brain, even though maybe it doesn't sound like it. This one says, if you could just get people who are socially isolated with their addiction to connect with people again, that would kind of restore the factory settings on the brain. They would get reintegrated into society, and then uh, you would have people who are no longer addicted. But here's the thought experiment. Take a look at these guys here. Let, let's say, you know, we did those three things. We, we took away their chemical urges and we restored these young people's brains back to their factory settings in terms of all the things that happen to the brain when you abuse substances. And all those things are gone. The cravings are gone. What happens to the brain in terms of dopamine uptake and those kind of things, all cured. Okay, done. Then we go in and and we we deal with their trauma and we restore their brain and their central nervous system back to its factory settings. Okay, and we connect these guys with a group of people that are doing what society says you should do. They're, they're going to work and school and forming, uh, you know, healthy adult relationships. Are these guys ready to go? Are they cured? I don't think so. I think for these guys, for me, for most people who are recovering from an addiction, there's a number of things that have to change. I mean, just think about what you're going to have to be able to do and think differently to go from being addicted to being uh, a normal and I don't want to say normal, but just think what you're going to have to do to go from being addicted to being somebody who, who is not addicted and living a healthy, sober lifestyle. You might have to learn different speech patterns. You know, I'm not going to talk the way I talked when I was using substances. I'm not going to hang out at the places I was hanging out at. My sense of humor might have to change as I, as I interact with people who aren't using substances. I may have some, uh, some deficits uh, of growth and maturity that didn't happen while I was using substances, and I'm going to have to somehow catch up to everyone else. I'm going to have to learn how to deal with my emotions now that, I, now that I'm not using substances. I'm going to have to uh, learn how to interact socially with people and and explain why why things are so different for me now and why I'm not doing what I did before. Uh, for these young people here, they might have to decide, where am I going to live? Am I going to go into this 30-day program that's going to help me get an ID and help me get back, get my documents and, and help me kind of get back on track? If I, if I do that, what am I going to do? 
what kind of job do I even like? What are my skills? What if I'm not doing substances? What what am I going to do? And this is true for these guys. It's true for everybody. If if substances have been a significant part of your life and you've been abusing them in a significant way, you've got a whole bunch of choices that you have to make now. And, and you're going to have to learn a whole bunch of new skills. So how does that person get help? There's always going to be a need for people to talk to someone else. We as, as people who want to help people who are suffering with an addiction, we can't just kind of you know wash our hands of them and tell them, you figured out on your own, we solved the, the biological problems here. Now, now go figure out what you want to do differently. That's not really helpful. That this complete, It's almost neglectful. It's also not helpful for us to jump in and say, here's what you need to do. Follow these steps. This is going to be the best decision for you. None of that is really helpful either. We really need to learn to adopt a guiding style where we're with the person. We understand where they're coming from and we're not operating on them. You know, like they're a patient etherized upon a table, but we're working with them. So is it all about the brain? No, there's way more involved in it. Do I hope that the brain research can eventually deliver everything that it says it can deliver? I hope that it does. I hope that it does because it will eliminate some of the problems that an addicted person is going to face. But there's still going to be a need for people to come alongside the person who's been addicted and help them sort through the changes.